<laughs> we'll figure that out later, guys. And All right, so it looks like the game has started. And um, on the pick screen, we have eight characters that um, people can choose from. In this particular case, they're all random. Every match, you're going to have somewhat of a different set of characters. Looks like uh, we're going to have somebody picking a Knessa. So there's two damage, two you know flanks. You know that's got to be Joe. It's probably Joe. It is Joe. We'll see, Joe we'll right see some there. Knessa action over here. So um, there's two of each um, category. There's four players on the team. And um, sometimes teams will go all Knessas probably, <laughs> and which they can do. There's no limitation right now. Okay. <clears throat> and other times you'll have a more balanced team. So in this case, it's, it looks like they actually have um, a team of a full comp. They do. So, Look so at they, that. They I'm have so proud of them. Frontline, flanking, healing, and uh, damage. Good old-fashioned damage. Their high-res Joe loading <laughs> up on the Knessa. Two of each class of a randomly selected preset of eight champions. Now, what if I don't have all the champions, Ares? What do I get to pick from then? Four champions, one of each class, are always going to be available okay. for people no matter what champions you own. And four other ones are going to be based on whether you own them or not. Beautiful. So no matter what, if you're brand new to the realm, no matter what, you're going to have somebody to pick from. And I imagine that subset of four champions will be at least one from each class. One from each class. One from each uh, category. Got it. Okay. So... Very important things here. This is a battle royale mode within Paladins. We've had something similar in a survival mode a long time ago. Yes, a long time ago we experimented with uh, King of the Hill type, last man standing with a fog coming in. And um, that, that wasn't very popular and for a variety of reasons. But now, right. obviously, with the uh, way that battle royale has been embraced by the communities, we decided to add a mode of our own. And you can see that they're all starting in the same um, island. This is, a, this is a very sacred part of the battle royale. Yeah, the, the jumping lobby. The jumping on the hill part. So this is when you're going to see, you know, the open mic. Some guys blaring in the arms of an angel. My heart will go on. Something like that. The jump party. This seems to be the most popular spot. Every time that I've played, this is where the jump party starts. We got 68 in here. A little bit of a preload in, and wow, looking at all different kinds of champions running around in here. Now, normally this mode will run with 100 oh, people in it. Um, we only have about 70 or so stations at the show floor, so um, the number is a little bit smaller than a typical match, but it will still give everybody a good sense for what the gameplay looks like. The map itself is obviously in an early state. It's on pre-alpha, and um, it's going to go a long way before release. We do expect to um, put this Mode out for testing during this uh, first quarter. And we got 40 seconds till deployment here. So talk to me about, are we going to still be seeing just, these are the champions, do they have the same abilities? Do they have the same guns? Do they have the same loadout cards, legendaries? How does that all play into this new mode? This plays exactly like normal paladins with the champions, the equipment and the weapon that, and abilities that they already have. So you don't change the guns out, but you do find cards and that give you a lot of extra strength during the match itself. So there's loot boxes to get. The cards that you start off with are going to be the ones that you want to bring into the match, gotcha. just like a normal Paladin setup. Okay, so we're getting ready to roll here. Last couple of seconds in the pre-game lobby. All these teams, what are they going to do right now? So the available areas are uh, lit in green. They're random every time. And then you can see little red dots that appear. That's where other teams are oh, wow. decided so to go. So you can seek out the action if that's what yeah, you're so into. Yeah, so you can decide to go early into a square. Or hide. <laughs> or you can hide, or you can decide to go in a place where there's nobody else. And it does drop your team together to make sure that you wow. already start as a team versus traveling to find each other. Okay. Look and you can see that's a mini map. map. They are looking for, they're going to look for loot right now. The map is very large. It's about 300 plus times the size of a normal Paladins map. And obviously, uh, we did our first pass to populate the map, but there's a lot more to go as far as adding additional structures and additional... Um, uh, points of interest. All right, so we're riding along here with High Res Joe and whoever he has been fortunate enough to bring alongside him. I'm hearing that he might have Lazy on his team. That might be that Eevee player. Not a lot of players jump at the chance to scoop an Eevee. There's and one there now. You have, now, you see two different uh, card types. There's a lit, well, I'm sorry, there's an epic card and there's a green card. Mm. Um, the cards have different qualities. One has plus 50% damage, one plus 10% damage. So obviously, Gotcha. The rarity increases. So purple is a really good card. There's four <laughs> tiers of cards. That's pretty good, yeah. First there's, chest. There's the normal card. There's uh, that's um, white. Or, okay. There's there's green, blue, green, blue, purple, purple, and gold right now. And gold. So you can see it has 
He has a blue, a green, and a purple. Well, where do I get gold? The gold chests only drop from, at the moment, from uh, zeppelins that fly over overhead. Okay, and so, so will drop similar them. to what the players dropped in as. Is that yeah, what I'm so looking like at for? Yeah, so once a minute, there will be one that drops somewhere in the world. You want to fight over it because legendary stats are exceptionally high. They're wow. well beyond anything else. For example, it goes from a 50% damage to a 100% damage plus a whole bunch of additional uh, very strong stats. Uh oh, we got a little bit of a fight breaking out here. One Kinesa player. So it, that yeah, it looks store. like it's, it looks like a fight has already uh -oh. started. Oh my God! An early chicken. Uh oh, what does so that mean? When you turn into a chicken, that's when somebody actually shoots you down. Now, normally. Um, but she's back. He's got. He he was revived. Okay, so you can picked up out of your chicken. So you can still waddle around your teammates, have a chance to actually come back. It looks like that was a yeah. A pretty Decently now, long cast time, so you got to get out of the action for that to happen. Yeah, luckily this was a far away engagement, so there was an ability to resurrect someone. But in a lot of other situations, if it's close by, you don't get that quite as often. And he was very nice of Joe, by the way, to show us how he turns into a chicken, uh -oh. just so uh, we can understand ooh. it. And now he's got somebody else. Now, if they can go find but they gotta finish a teammate, right. they yeah, need to if finish they him. find a teammate, they can get resurrected. But a chicken can be shot relatively fast, so um, if he finishes it off... Oh, looks, looks dangerous. Caught out, and you do. You see the return of, of the mounts here in Palins. Like we said, this is a massive, massive map. So you can actually remount it. Looks like. Yeah. So we have the mount always available. It takes a couple of seconds to cast it, and um, then you can round the mount um, anywhere through the map. Wow. So getting into this engagement. This is a, a real. Uh, uh oh. oh uh, this is trouble. Chicken. This is a frag. Looks like a de Roasted. dead chicken. That's HRX. So now they, they did bring down one person. They've got some a close up fight here. I like this engagement they've got. They're clumped up. They're around this Grok totem. They're going to be able to get a good amount of healing. I hear another chicken coming through. Roasted as well. That's two down for whoever this unfortunate squad is that we see our boys facing off. Just a healer remaining in a buck. Can they turn this around? Oh! Just the two of them. Oh, uh -oh. oh. who's going to go down 79 here? 79 health. I was really, really, he, really he made close. it out. But he did make it out, and they took down. Look, I like what I'm seeing here. So you see a green arrow that points up, a red arrow that points down, and a just beige arrow that is almost in a recycling symbol. What There's are those a swap. Mean? So basically, okay. it'll very quickly show you if, it, if the item is an upgrade, or if it's a downgrade, or if it's an equal gotcha. uh, version. So That's you'll, know, really good. you'll know very quickly whether you want to My man, that you do not. Find this man, teach him how to play some Kinesa. Hold the scope, charge it up, and do your damn. Uh-oh, that teammate not looking good. This guy's got no idea how to play Knesset. There's a fully charged shot, but he's going to miss. Tyra's actually oh my god! Out. This is not looking good for this squad. Oh. We're following him. He's going to go down. Chicken form oh, as well. The entire he, team is a chicken. I don't know that they have any more teammates. You're right. They, they're right. out at rank 15. So we have about maybe 20 teams in, maybe a little less. OK, yeah, we see 49. So. This is Joe. This is Joe's squad. I remember from their composition earlier. Joe's got two epics already. And it looks like he might be going around legendary hunting. I mean, who we were watching? That was, uh, I think they just swapped to somebody random who was actually in the action. I don't think that's appear. what it was. That was not a pro player. That was not Lazy's Kness. I'll tell you that much. 48 players remain. This is a big map, Eras, though. How are we forcing these engagement? I'm seeing a fog covering. What is that? Yeah, so in a typical uh, battle rail fashion, a fog comes in, which limits this, the area that players can What's play that in. What's right there on the minimap? That little, uh, that little purple yeah, that box. little thing. That's that's a legendary drop. Oh wow! So Tells people where it is right now. Uh, we'll see if we'll keep it in that way. But basically, um, you do want to go towards it and Ooh. usually get it. There's, but there's typically a lot of fights over around there. It. There yeah. are players. Joe being pretty careful. It definitely creates engagements. About how he wants to approach this, he's chosen to just get off his horse here. Looking for some shots. These are some long distance shots. He's going to transport her up, try to get a better angle on this fight. Still on his horse. That guy's moving, but he's going to get dismounted. Joe with a nice shot there to dismount two. Big shots coming out on the Saris. One more. She may have been turned into a chicken and just engaging from this safe range. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Is That's Knesset the way to play. tend to oh. be this well? Like she got the range. Yeah, but then some flanker comes by and just kills her. So oh. obviously, uh, it's important of where the engagement is. If it's outdoors, yeah. You can see that uh, she has um, obviously some advantages, but as you saw in in the area around the um, actual structures, uh, she got killed pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Joe's <laughs> in trouble. 54 oh my HP. God. Joe's got to get out of there, but he did find a frag. He d he did get a shield also. On his way out. Great protection bubble from the tour ball there. This is the full. This is the benefit of having the full composition. He's getting healed. He's getting shielded up by his tour ball. Knessa going straight into it. She wants this fight, and she's gonna get it. I don't know if that was the best play from her. She gets turned into a chicken quickly, taken down, and 
I think it's just Torvo. He's going to try to get his mount, but I like that right there. He tried to get his mount up, but he couldn't. It's a three-second cast time, you were saying, so he can't just get out of a fight for free. Yes, although there is probably a legendary card that would get you in a mount almost instantaneously. Ooh, the return of Equestrian, is it? That's but a, if you do get damaged... Oh, there it is, boys. You, you do drop off a mount. The World Stomper is 100% movement speed. I think I saw 30% armor on there as well. So these are the effects that you're traditionally going to be used to seeing from the in-game item store. There's no credits in this game mode. No. There's no item store in this game mode. It's all about the loot box. And you can see it has 100% armor, which reduces your damage by 50% Wow! at the moment, plus a uh, variety of other very strong stats. So she currently has an effective health of double what you're seeing. So about okay, so 2,500 so base about a 5, 000, HP, uh, but 50% damage reduction. Kinesa. So we're about 5k <laughs> effective HP. And that's going to mitigate both direct and blast shield. It's not going to discriminate circles. Getting a little bit closer and closer. Still got a lot of people left. It looks like Joe and the boys might be finding another engagement up here. So Joe always seems to get pretty looted. He's got it nailed down. So there are four item slots in this game mode. And we're seeing one on the weapon, one on the chest, one on the hands for the gloves, and then, of course, the boot slot. So those are all the weapons you'll be looking to get outfitted. Joe just gets marked up by a Tyra. I don't see it here. I don't think Joe does either. I wonder where... They were exactly looking to engage from. But Joe's, I, I don't see Joe's ultimate. Oh, there they are up there. They won't be able to engage from that range, I don't think. Joe's ultimate isn't, over time, regenerating. So ultimates in this mode do not take up automatically. You have to kill other players or do damage in gotcha. order to increase your ultimate. So and you, have to you don't get them as frequently as you used to, but whoa, Ooh. that was close. Joe's playing a risky here. Yeah. 180 HP. He's going to get out of combat. This looks like the Torvald from his squad. They're a little bit more split up than they typically have been in the past, Joe. Looking for the big shots there. This team's already found one frag. The Knesset's down, so Joe is going to be pretty much free firing at this point. And it will be Saris getting involved, the front line and the support. They go for actually a nice little flank maneuver there, and Joe's just going to BM, watch his opponent, give him a nice little, uh, little love, let him know. And that's obviously a player that died, so they dropped the loot yeah. that they had. And if you can find those players that had those legendaries, you're obviously going to be extremely strong. Joe right now has one legendary, three epics. So he's fairly strong, so although obviously with additional legendaries, he would be significantly stronger. So I just won this fight. I'm rolling up to these loot chests that my enemies have dropped because they're noob idiots. And I want to give one of my items that I currently have to a teammate. How would I go about doing that? So there's two strategies here. One is, do you want to make one of your teammates exceptionally strong, right? You might want to put okay. all the legendaries on one teammate that can then just destroy everyone, <laughs> right? That's one strategy. The other one is to be kind of greedy and just pick up the legendaries for yourself. Yeah, don't tell them about it. There's nothing and there, boys. Nothing yeah, there. yeah. Move along. Nothing, nothing to see. Nothing to see here. Move along, folks. So, um, and if you do want to trade, you can just use the loot crate to trade okay. um, an item that's crate. in the... In the, uh, in the you can trade the item in and out. Gotcha. So that's the current way that people are doing it. So any loot crate that you find, a legendary chest from the sky, even you saw. And that's a good way to tell when a, a legendary chest has, in fact, been looted when you see some crap in there. Because right now, what are the things that we're going to see? Is it only legendaries in those chests, or can you get bad RNG and get uh, an It's epic? only legendaries on those okay. chests. So if there's anything less than a legendary in those big purple chests, that drop from the Zeppelins, you know somebody has been there. You need to be on high alert. Another engagement starting here. We've got 27 players remaining. Big shots from high res Joe. He's now, if you heard hitted. the foghorn, that's the, uh, that's that's the log coming know. in. Okay, the zone has been marked, and the zone will now start to right. contract. Oh, nice shot. You I don't know if this is a smart engagement error. As you said, the foghorn has just sounded, and Joe is... He's only about 25 yards or so away from this fog. Well, the map is bigger than you probably think, but <laughs> it's but it's going to come in. But if they Absolutely. get if they get caught up in this fight here and the fog yeah, they, closes they can in die. over them, and chickens die automatically in the fog. Wow! So if so you turn into a chicken, the fog comes over, you're done. If you get if you get killed outside of the play zone, instant instant death. You are not oh, able he to did be chicken revived. Another There's Beautiful another there. one. Beautiful. That's going to go down. Out. Joe's on his fifth frag for the squad. So. Does your squad, does your team share kills? I see five streak from Joe, but he hasn't gotten all five of those killing blows. Well, uh, it's it's anybody who hits a target. Gotcha. It gets included inside the... So just like the, uh, the elimination. So he tagged it's, one it's there. An elimination. Torvald finished it off. Nice reposition here from Joe. So he's going to get credit for that kill as well. Putting another chicken in. He's hitting really hard. Oh. Nice shot on the jumping chicken. This is why we watch Joe. Joe is a very good Kinesi, I he's, gotta say. Uh, that's, that's his specialty. He's a sniper. 
That guy had uh, some nice items, but nothing Joe doesn't already have. And you can see how fast he's killing people now, because if they don't have good cards, if they weren't engaged in, to find those cards, he's going to mow them down pretty quickly. There's going to be an additional stat that we're going to be testing out, which okay. is for every kill you get, you do additional damage. Wow. So, so I like that, though. Re reward aggressive play, yeah. Harris. We don't want to see so, these campers sitting in a building the whole game. Yeah, there's, it, it'll be worthless to camp because Joe right now would have probably an additional 100% damage. It's probably 5% per elimination. <laughs> so you can imagine like that it. he'll be one-shotting people <laughs> left and right unless they also did the same kind of thing. He's going to snowball out of control. Another engagement looking to begin. Headhunter is available. Joe's going to oh. pop it. Joe's going to go oh, in. Big shots onto Barrick and Saris, forcing them out of the fight. Three players low. Torvald could sneak around this corner, clean him up. Another chicken taken down by Joe and the boys. Oh, Big another headshot. Head Looks like it puts somebody into the chicken state. It is easy cleanup. No, Joe's going to miss that one. Just barely going to get around the corner. He's going to throw the oppressor mine. Now, the tempo we're looking for is at the start of the game, the time to kill is relatively average, average right? Uh, similar to what Any we're at with Paladins right now. Gotcha. You, know, you don't have super strong cards yet. But as the game progresses, you get better loot. Now, some of the loot does give you defensive stats. Sure. But at the same time, the offensive stats grow faster than the defensive stats. Okay. So it becomes more and more deadly. And gotcha. you have to get that loot in order to be able to compete at the end. And you have to get kills in order to compete at the end, or to compete well. So at the end of the match, you could literally go one versus four if, if you got the looted. appropriate loot and you killed a lot of people along the way. Gotcha. Joe and his squad still trying to clean up the Sarah's Joe's not in the best spot right now. He's sitting on top of a Tyra firebomb reposition, looking through the windows here. Doesn't like what he sees. Low HP Sarah's Torvald's getting in there. He's getting involved. Little EB ultimate coming out as well and Torvald's gonna take him down nice shots coming out Torvald cleaning things up I wonder who we've got piloting on the rest of Joe's squad so question for you is late game what is that ultimate somebody be in that's Cy Bait little fanatic player there I've got four legendaries you've got four legendaries our defensive stats are going to cancel out, but we've both got, you said the, the offensive stats late game will carry on. So it's just going to come down to who has more kills is who's going to have more damage. Yeah, so towards the end, if everybody has equivalent legendaries, and it's very difficult to get four legendaries. Yeah, it looks Your like team it. most likely has to help you get those if you want, because you can see even with all these kills, he only has one legendary still. That's um, true. We've seen two legendaries, three legendaries. I'm not sure. This, it's been very rare to get all four legendaries. So... Typically, that doesn't happen, so you will have some stat differences between them. Now, if your team does build you up, you know, if you want the ultimate Kinesa, then um, the kills do count significantly towards that. Okay. So. And at that point, um, you know, if you did better during the match, you're going to own a lot more at the end of the match. Beautiful. So we've got a legendary chest dropping, but the circle is growing tighter and tighter. 16 players remain. Joe and his squad have taken down. Total of nine, he's participated. Big shot there on the Tyra. One more, will not quite, there it is. Third shot sends her into the chicken form and Torvald again cleans it up. I believe that is Saiba eight of Fnatic playing that Torvald. Evie into the ice block, Joe should be with proper timing, able to put that one down as well. Into the chicken he goes, Torvald. And one other remain, it looks like it might be an Evie. Big headshot coming now, out. For people that think it's really easy to play Sniper, just because Joe is doing it well doesn't mean that it's easy. He has He's a pro front line on his squad. And you saw the first Knesset we watched go Ooh. down very quickly. Oh, my God. Look at three, that. That is. Let me see those stats real quick, There's three legendaries Joe. there. Damn. Plus 100% damage, damage. Plus 100% health. And 100% oh armor. Oh, my God. Eternal so he fighting. has. Woo! If we, if his health right now is at over 8,000 as a Knesset. 100 uh, with that damage reduction. And, uh, yeah, it's got some crazy. Now. He doesn't have armor penetration, which means or he okay. doesn't have great Does armor on the penetration. Slot? So that means that uh, he's still not going to be doing quite as much damage as he can potentially. Because okay. somebody ha can have legendary uh, damage reduction. Sure. So these are all. Now, you see the purple beam yeah. on the, uh, well, if he, if he zooms out, cr legendary crates that have not been opened yet have the purple beam coming out of them. Okay. And Once there was one on touched. the left side there. Once they're touched, the awareness here, After you, they're open, they, um, and the legendary is looted, the beam goes off. I think they're more concerned about... Yeah, they're more they're concerned about the fight. Something. They're smelling something in this map, and you'll recognize some of these times. Now, I do have to say, if it was myself playing Kinesa, and I've tried it several times, it's an ugly scene. It's an ugly scene. It's some, not for everyone. Joe plays a lot of this. Some dumb flanker just comes behind me and kills me instantaneously, and I get very <laughs> frustrated. So Joe, it, doesn't, it doesn't look anything like this. Yeah, Joe, not quite a one trick, but 
close to it. This is definitely his top three characters. Joe plays a little bit of Buck. Buck for over and Kinesa are yeah. definitely his top three. They're engaging now. And our roving death squad has found 13 <coughs> frags, 10 remaining. Joe just needs legendary gloves. So he is essentially almost kitted out best in slots across the board. Oh, and there is that extra legendary that's still active. They can still get, but. You would think uh, one of the head programs would know that that's what that oh, means. Oh, they know, but he's obviously more focused on the uh, gameplay. All right. That's why he's a good gamer. If it was me, I'd like be running be straight there. for that thing and dying. <laughs> you'd be scooping. Absolutely. You'd be scooping that loot. Uh, uh, too greedy. Uh-oh, oh, Joe oh, Saris and is dead. And so you can see what happened was from that uh, Joe's? No, that wasn't no, that was somebody still else. good. Who is this EV player fragging out in the back line? They've still got four strong here. They're all pretty healthy. 14 frags now, Joe missing one shot there. That could have ended the fight right then and there. But this is a 1v4 situation. Saris, no way she's making it out out of that. So just five players remain. Five that players left. That means it's, it's their team plus one other up. person. We got this one wrapped I think it's up, pretty much over at this point because I'm not sure how We're anybody's going to take on Joe with his three legendaries we gotta, we gotta, and a full team know, at this though. point. You never know. Oh, Who yeah. He gave, us, he gave us the, ta the taunts. He's letting them know. He's worked hard for this 15 frags. Up, there and there it go. is. Somebody Last one is out. It. And we watch Joe once again take my $20. Oh, no. He's going to take it. Maybe he could split it with some of his teammates. Yeah, he does that a lot to me. To be fair, I mean, he put some work in. He didn't really exactly get carried, I don't think. No, they gave him the best items, though. We'll, we'll say that for yeah, him. At least. Yeah, absolutely. Are we going to do one more, or what's our Maybe. status here? I don't know. We'll hear for the word on that. But, guys, that was a game of Paladin's Battlegrounds. That was a lot of fun, and I'm hearing that was just so much fun that we are going to be do one more. And we'll do another our one. Smite fans joining us. Just ask over Twitch if they want to see one more. Ask Twitch. Twitch chat, let us know. We've got some Smite action kicking off. We've got a quarterfinal matchup over on the main stage. If you got some Smite fans, you enjoyed what you saw here, head on over. We want to let you know that that action is about to kick off. But those that are enjoying it here, we are going to stay on Paladin's Battlegrounds here on twitch.tv slash Paladin's Game. Chad, of course, you know you want to see one more of that. That was a lot of fun. That was a, a, a nice long, that was a great change of pace. That was a bit of a longer game as well. This is exactly the type of mode that I want to be doing when I'm streaming eight hours into the night. You know, I want to just switch it up a little bit, get something different going. It was a longer game because they lasted until the end. That My was, average game time is about two minutes. <laughs> I liked where that ended, though. I've always seen the open endings. That was really cool to see when I actually close up uh, on a city there and look yeah. like a little timber mill top set. So, are we are we throwing another twenty down on this match? What do you say? I think about a twenties. You know what I've got, actually here, Ares. <laughs> I've been saving this for a rainy day. This is a five dollar Australian bill. No. Now this is probably not going to be useful for me. You want to know something cool about these? Not actually? the five dollar Australian. The five Australian dollars. You want to know something cool about these? It's not like a like a cloth or a linen, like a US dollar. It's actually some type of something, plastic. I think it's magic. You can't rip it. Let me see. Oh. Just kidding, you actually. That did not work. That's embarrassing. That did not <laughs> I work swear. like intended. I swear to God. That was an old thing. You, you Maybe it's this way you can't rip it. I'm pulling as hard as I can right now, and it doesn't rip. <laughs> this is an old five Australian dollar. <laughs> <laughs> that was not. That did not work out as planned. We're gonna throw this into the pot as well. So if Kanga can take a win, which they already have, actually, they took the first actual matchup squad. We're gonna stay on High Res TV here as well uh, for you guys that want to watch another one before we kick things over onto the main stage. The boys from the Kanga roster, the Australians, actually did end up taking our first ever show match here. We're gonna sweeten the pot a little bit. If anyone has anything in the crowd they'd like to throw in, feel free as well. We've got the five Australian and the 20 US. We well, the 20 has already been can double claimed. nothing. That's already been claimed. I've got an Alienware laptop down here. Damn. I mean, we could really start to, to sweeten the pot for you guys. I got a pretty hair over here for sale. You're, my life is forfeit. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to throw me into the pot as well. I could be your slave for the day or two. We've got this neat little toy here. I actually streamed myself running over here from the, from the, uh, from the main stage. That was pretty cool. You ever seen one of these? No, it looks too complicated to use. It's really not. It almost feels like it feels like a toy. It's got a little joystick up there. It's going to be a lot of fun, guys. We are here in the Expo Hall having some fun with Paladin's Battlegrounds. I'm joined here by Erez Gorin, our fearless leader and CEO of High res Studios. My name is Pretty Hair. We're going to throw it to a quick little break, and we'll be right back with game number two.
Do you miss me at all? Do you think about the things we used to do? No, you couldn't stand tall. So why didn't you, why didn't you call? So many years has gone by. But I think about you, about you all the time. Looks like you're changing and all. here to the Expo Hall at HRX 2018, powered by INAP. Pretty hair here, back with you again. Quick little break there. My man Ares, he's pulling up the Twitch chat because that's what we're about here. We request that you guys follow alongside with us here in the Expo Hall. We're going to do another game. We just got finished, actually, with our first uh, Paladins Battlegrounds game, the first money match. We've got a sweet little pot up here. I say we double or nothing. Mickey got a 20 on you. We want we want to go double or nothing here. We got 20 USD, and <laughs> unfortunately, I swear to God. All right, let's talk about the character picks over All here. All right, let's do it. We got so new new characters. I think we want to see a buck this time from Joe. Eight fresh new. He's hovering. He loves the buck, but he he wants his range. Arrows. I know, but he's got to play the buck. If he doesn't play the buck, we're going to be bad. Mm, Joe, he wants that Leon. He's not ready to let it go. Come on, Joe, pick buck. I got it. I got it. Tend to agree with yeah. Joe. Oh, yeah, he's gonna go for the buck last second swap. Yeah, we want to see some close-up action. Joe with see the how that play. works out. Looks like they have a team. It's a of, risk here. I mean, they have a, all a close-up team here, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. We'll be able to see um, fairly soon. I'd be curious to see if, who is on Joe's team. I think I saw Cybe eight. Maybe production can get us that info at some point. Now this is gonna this. be a much tougher match for Joe you than, think so? than the Kinesa uh, match. It's Joe versus Incon. Okay, wow. so the other side is Incon. Incon, for those of you that may know him, big smite streamer, big personality. We've had him here at HRX on the desk a couple of times doing some great work for us. But let's see how his skills match up. I know he's a good MOBA player, but this is a different realm. This is FPS, baby. Yeah, and maybe we, um, maybe we need the camera to go on them for a few seconds just to show, um, show where it's at. Now, in this particular match, and this is the interesting part, don't forget, with okay. eight characters being different in a match, it's every match is going to feel different because Definitely. there are so no Knessas now. You, you can't be shot a mile can. away. That means that you're going to have much closer engagements. Some matches have long-range characters. Yeah. You can go as four Knessas if you want, and some matches are going to be much, um, much closer by. Much closer. So last game, we had a lot of long-range when you really think about it. Torvald, Saris, Knessa, as well as an EB. All of those characters have projectiles or hit-scan bullets that are going to go a very long distance, be very confirmable. And there's, there's Joe, Joe in the back. Is that Incon in the back? That's in the back. That's He's Joe. playing Makoa. There it is. There Hit with go. the flex, baby. There's He's playing Makoa, his spirit animal, the big ancient turtle. They have a nice close-range composition. This time around, they've got Buck, Makoa, Talus, and Maldamba. Maldamba should be able to heal from a safe distance, but the rest of these characters, they're going to have to get up close to engage. And it's going to be very important for them to stay together as a group because if they separate and there are any characters that can even hit a mini range, they're going to be dead. So talk to me about this four-man squadron. You can, of course, with having one of every class, you can almost formulate a, a, any sort of composition that you want to go. And it's going to take a lot of strategy. And during the keynote, Todd was saying, this mode is designed for the four-man squad. 
And one thing you have to remember is that you're going to need to look at what the available eight classes are yeah. in each match because that should determine how you should go about your own composition. Exactly. So you're not going to want a composition of all close-range characters if you see that there's some um, um, very long range and you have no shields, for example, mm. to protect you from the long-range characters, right? So that's the combination you need to it's look at. Kind of and I think I think Incon is playing a turtle, right? Yeah, Incon is playing Makoa. We've got Inara here as the other selection of tank. Couple Groks. I see some Cassies, Talus, Leons rolling around. We've got Maldamba as one healer. So Grok is the other support. Leon, of course, being one of the damage. And the map is starting. There it is. So they've selected a drop pretty far off here, being pretty safe, but they've stayed close. Uh, to some buildings. You're not going to find much loot out in the open. You're going to have to get in these towns to get some loot. Yeah, most of the loot is there are about 50 or so outposts in the um, game right now. And um, most of the loot is going to be at the outposts. So you really need to go there to um, get those crates open. And there's a nice start. Bang, bang. Two items. There it is. One Both blue, one green. So he's just slightly above... Um, the base stats. Above average right now. Joe's And you see around. the green arrow. I, gotta say, I love the green arrow thing. Yeah. I love because you saw last game, Joe was in a really kind of tense fight. And the second he started to drop some frags, he went for the loot, grabbed a couple of quick things, but then he had to keep fighting. So that's really nice to just be able to do on the fly. It's very important. I wonder if anybody's going to dare to challenge Makoa in this mode. <laughs> we'll have to see. 0% alt charge. Like Ares mentioned in the last game, you have to engage. You have to fight. And I got to say, there's a lot of a lot of incentive to fight, whether it's stacking up damage later in the mechanics, whether it's getting ultimate charge, stealing other people's items. I love this play style of you guys are really reward, rewarding aggression. And the thing is, um, in this game, we're definitely not going to be hiding bathrooms because oh, it doesn't yeah. do you any good. No, no prone in the tub. Which is my strategy typically if I play <laughs> one of the other games, but you know, I'm very bad at them, so <laughs> I would not be one to look at. You know, no champions were ever made going prone in a bathtub. Yeah. You have to get involved. You have to stand like a man on your own two feet. Well, it looks like Incon does have four cards now. They're not the highest level quality. Um, they're kind of like low end, but... Hey, but it's better than nothing. Better than nothing for sure. You can see Makoa's HP. Starting to scale up just a little bit, and we talked about how these itemizations are going to work into the late game. Oh. Wow, look at that! Two double epics back to back. Double like, epic loot. You Very don't nice. Just leave this right. Incon should communicate to his team. I just dropped a blue in this chest. If anybody doesn't have blue weapon slot, I believe that was that he just dropped. You want to make sure there he is. Dropped a blue. If anyone needs, there it is. Incon, the team player, the support guy at heart, but he's very disjointed from the rest of his team. His Grok's low HP. He's got to get over there. He's oh, and there was uh -oh. a fight going. Into the chicken, but Incon with the nice body blocks. Try and keep that. Look at that shield. Incon, it doesn't matter. Smite or Paladins, the support gameplay runs true. One Grok down, two Groks down. Makoa swinging for the oh, fences. Oh, oh, very nice. Nicely done. I got to say, Incon, he oh, split look at off that. from his team to go hey. get loot. Eras, did that pay off, though? He is hitting for 1,002 <laughs> damage. He is swinging. And that's before getting any legendaries. That's just two epics and two greens. I have seen a Makoa with four legendaries that was just taunting the Jeez. other team. <laughs> and they couldn't do anything to him as he was <laughs> killing them because they weren't stacked with items. That's absolutely terrifying. And now as Incon's squad reaps the spoils of war and what I heard that it is Incon and his gang versus Joe and his squadron for the marbles. Jaguar Falls is the... The map you may recognize, that's where they were just engaging. This is Joe's squad. And you can see the Zeppelin up high. That is it. That, that is going to drop a legendary item. So okay. Joe knowing that you need to get those legendary items is obviously eyeing it very closely because he wants to get it before it shows up in a mini-map where everybody else is going to get it. And there it goes. There's the drop. Wow, look at that. Right They're to right him. right there. Beautiful. And on demand. 100% extra health on Buck. Oh, that's big. Oh, that's going to feel good. That's really big as well as 30%. So... For what life this steal. is, the life steal as well, life rip three essentially as well as rejuvenate three. Those are the effects from the base paladins item store as well as some new ones here. Joe, making his way, he's playing a flanker, but he misses his jump. This is not great for him. 4600 HP, but can engage from long range. He's gonna try and poke this talus down. If I were him, I would have retreated down that oh, hill. He's just gonna go in there and get got, aggressive. He's chicken one down. Look, and he's using that shielding very well. Jump right back into the shield. They're nah. probably going to try to res their chicken, but I think... Ooh. Did they kill the chicken? Yep. 
They killed another one, they killed two. Another one. 999 damage headshot from Joe. He's oh, there's another chicken. Another frag. There it is. They're going to clean it up, Joe. A smart engage from him and his squad. And a couple upgrades That's for him. That's it. You open the loot chest, you look for the green arrows, you smack those, and you get right back in the fight. I love that about this loot system. Joe and the boys going to clean up another one. Nothing for him there. Quick peek at that loot. Exactly. He would have had even trades or one downgrade available. So he's going to leave that, but he looks like it's spotted. And you can see how much difference Ledger made. It was very hard to kill Joe with I that mean, particular item. Double max health. Rejuvenate three, so Maldamba gonna be healing him for 30% more, as well as he's got 30% lifesteal on a character that hits harder. That's all stats that they're gonna synergize well with each other. As Joe gets items that provide more damage to him, that lifesteal is just gonna become that much more valuable. It looks like they've found another legendary chest that still has its beam. This mode reminds me a lot of some of the original way that we played um Ooh. Oh, another legendary. Movement Huge speed armor. Mount speed. That is massive armor. He's going to move fast. He's, he's going to be super tanky at, at this point. His That's effective perfect. health is close to uh, 9,000 now. Over 9,000, you would say. So he's moving fast on his horse. That's going to be really big for Joe because he's got to be able to get up close. If he wants there's to another this legendary. He's got another one, but look at the speed. Joe is able to rip across the map, and it's inside. Will, will the legendary chest always drop? Inside of a marked play zone, or sometimes with, oh, oh my god, Joe is kidding. 100% damage. He's kidding, boys. I don't know. All this right, is I looking think, grim for I think you're going to watch the turtle. Look at this. Look at this health, dude. This buck is tickling Joe. He's going to leap up. He's going to go for the engage. If he could hit a solid shot here to save his life, we could see how much damage. I don't think he's afraid of much. I, I, look at the damage he's taking. I wouldn't be either. And he's going to have heals from Mount Oh, Eight. look at those uh -oh. shots. Oh, and there's a chicken. That's oh, that was, damage. that was just nasty. 1057 yeah, there. And he doesn't need much, so at this point, Joe and his boys could just kind of hunt for more legendary That was chests. kind of a legendary Joe versus an average buck. The um, average so Joe. That was not going to last very long. <laughs> Looking around. And now, just to, for everybody to remember, this is not a standalone game. This is just a new mode that's going to be available to everyone playing Paladins. It does feel a lot more like some of the original game where you had mounts sure. and you could essentially um, run around anywhere on the map. Oh, checking in with oh. Incon here. He is in Mac some trouble. Oh, Incon falls behind the rock. There's where is his team? He's alone. The gang. Incon, no! He got ganged up on. He got yeah. ganked. That was it. Incon is going to need to practice a little more for this mode. Hey, he's a smite player. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll cut him some slack. Yeah. He only, he only aims in a 2D plane, so, you know, it's going to be a little different. <laughs> He's a support player, too. You have to aim in 3D. Absolutely. you got to be in tune with your FPS. But practice frag. makes perfect. Absolutely, it does. 27 remain here. Joe and the boys kitted pretty much to the teeth. Best in slots for Joe. Are there more than one legendary items per type? So in each slot, are we going to be seeing more than one legendary, or is it the mother load is the damage legendary? There is going to be more than one legendary available per slot with somewhat different stats on them. But um, at the moment, it's, they're all uh, single. Leon going in, is that? Ko is going to be just fine. Joe with a nice flank here. It's going to pay off big for him. He's going to pop his Look recovery, go to work on Grok. <laughs> the Grok was doing nothing to him. He's got anti-heal. 1,300 damage headshot. Another <laughs> one on to Maldamba. Two chickens here. Joe looking for the third. The cleanup is going to be good. Oh, he eats a big enlightenment recovery. Was... Back up to full HP and just presses the attack. Joe is unstoppable with his three <laughs> legendaries, his one epic. He is nearly best in slot, kitted to the teeth. More credits and kills in his name. He's just going to clean them up. Yeah, and you can see the items that the other team had that were just not strong enough to compete with that. Absolutely not. And that is the reward for getting aggressive, taking risks, seeking out the legendary chest. Prone in the bathtub is not the way to approach the Paladins Battle Royale. You do have to go after those legendaries, which are critical to um, getting strong. And, um, so that's a good thing to point out. No beam on that chest. No beam. That means the chest has already been looted. We're probably going to change it so the chest color is going to match the highest level of mm. the card inside. So you'll automatically know without having okay. to go that's cool. around pressing everything. That is pretty cool. And another, you know, risk reward if you're uh, looking at a legendary. I saw chest. a nice big castle in the background. You did Not see sure what that, that was. was huge. What yeah. is that tower over there? Um, I don't know. Secrets. Ooh. Well, I do see another um, another, another drop coming in. They do come in at one per minute right now. So. Zep zep. That's a lot of legendary loot, but that's that's fun and that feels more like it's going to transition from a, a traditional paladins as you get used to the mode as you start making it later and later into these games. You're saying the time to kill is just going to drop across the board. Yeah. Well, you saw what Joe did. 
with uh, people <laughs> that are. People that are, of course, on even footing when it comes to their loot uh, and their frags. 22 remain in this game, Joe. Just getting it served up to him on a silver platter. That is an even trade. He's already got that one. So, yeah, so he's going to want one of his friends to get yeah, it. Yeah, duplicate. But even though he didn't take that loot, the beam still goes away. Hmm. So if you, for instance, well, you well, got to check will, the chest. It will, it will stay there. It'll stay there. The chest isn't going anywhere. But that could be kind of funny to use. You could bait it out at the beam still there. No, there are actually some things in the background. I'm not sure which part oh, of the map God. they're on. Joe's got his ultimate as well. And for those of you that are familiar, uh-oh, a little engagement brew in here. Buck Wild is ready to go. Buck could pop this one. Joe's whoa, getting tossed. Whoa. He needs to hit the panic button. Nice shield from his Mako to keep him alive, turning one into a chicken, taking him down almost nice. immediately after sending him into the downward state. He's getting a lot of healing as well. Needs to pop that recovery sooner rather than later. Going for the reload. Two members already down. Joe cleans up a third. One Cassie remains. She dodge rolls backwards, but Joe hotter than heels. She was trying to hop on that mount. And with the legendary item that Joe's got, if he was in that situation, he gets on his mount, he actually might be able to disengage from that because he's got 45% mount speed, which is essentially master riding three. That could get him in and out of engagement really quickly. But now you can see that they had decent loot because right. they had a bunch of epics, and they, they, almost, they almost dropped Joe in the beginning. They did. They almost bursted him. And that was if they had legendaries, it would have been it, over. If it wasn't for that McCoa player, I don't know who that is on Joe's squad, but that man just saved the game essentially for Joe. Put that shield up. Kept him safe. He was able to recover back to full HP. One of the legendary items that Joe currently has, the eternal plating on his chest slot, best in slot legendary for him there, is going to increase the amount of healing he's taking from his homies, from his teammates. Joe's got just about every stat in the game, and they're just going Zeppelin hunting because that's the only way that Joe's going to be able to get upgrades at this point because he's done nothing but take risks, find fights, be aggressive, and hunt for those legendary loot chests. He wants that Zeppelin. There it is. Now, in theory, once people understand the game mode, and obviously we have a lot of new players here, there will be a lot more people converging on these uh, legendary drops, so there tend to be a lot of fights around yeah. them. And I see another beam over there. There's boots here for somebody. Joe's Exactly. Joe's going to call that out, and he's going to start moving his way on over to this next legendary chest, see if he can't get... Four for four, best in slot. No, another pair of world stompers, which are, are they're going to be valuable for the rest of Joe's team to have because they provide mount speed. Joe's ripping around. Oh, it's going to it's going to die as soon as it hits the fog. As soon as it touches the fog there. I guess nobody on Joe's team. Oh, the fog is right outside the easy. range. So, so they can pick him up. That's a good thing to. to highlight, though, because the chests are only going to drop in marked play zones. They won't. Will they drop anywhere? They will, they will drop into marked play zones, okay. and if a uh, chest goes into the fog, the chest will disappear. Gotcha. So fog just closed down. Next play zone is marked. Oh, you can there is see team. it there, and there's a team ready to engage. Another Zeppelin chest dropping into the sky. Joe's just going to cut them off. Heroic leap, dismounting Maldamba, looking one more oh, shot to send oh, him into that the was, chicken. That was a fast chicken. He is just two-shotting people not, at this point. Not, yeah, Quick those check. Those are crap items. Joe is, of course, going to slaughter that poor man. Shield goes down from Akoa. Slow goes out from Joe. This squad looks pretty fractured. It was just the two of them at that point. And that is, you were saying, it's very important to stay together and fight as a unit. It's gonna be now, just so you squads. know, if you are in the fog, you should mount and leave the fog. Gotcha. <laughs> Good you to can, know. You can mount in the fog, and you can outrace the fog with the mount. Assuming oh, you're not surprise. too far back. Oh, oh little chicken. Oh. 1,500 damage headshot there from Joe as he flanks this squadron. Looking for one more. Buck will go down. It looks like more easy pickings. Eight players remain, though. Maldamba ultimate's going to come out. Dread Serpent fears one. The last of the remaining. He's going to hit the emo. Turn into a chicken. Six players remain. 4v2. It looks like Joe and the boys might have themselves another W on the way. So we're seeing here a marked play zone. The fog hasn't closed in yet. The Zeppelins are only going to drop their legendary loot into this play zone. None of these chests will get destroyed by this fog that is currently collapsing. However, that chest we saw earlier that Joe was approaching on the edge of the fog that nobody looted will, in fact, be destroyed as right. this fog collapses. And you can see how different this particular match is from the previous match when Joe played Kinesa. Yeah. And strangely enough, it still works out really well. The gameplay has, has a lot more balance than we ever thought it would be on this scenario. Who would have so, thunk? Who would have thought? I mean, it, seems to be, um, it seems to be a lot of fun. And you saying we did it, boys? 
you can play all the classes and they seem to work. I mean, it just, it, it takes a different time. And you know, everyone's on even footing, so it's not like, I mean, there is Leon in the pool of champions. I haven't seen any Leons, and there's one of the two. That man had some world stompers as well. Into the buck while Joe goes, looking for one of two remaining players, but he's in the fog. He's taking some damage here, and this is chunking him down a decent bit. He lost a, almost 1,000 HP there. There is one player left for and them to hunt down. is this unfortunate? Now, you see the other group did not keep Newbity together. Did. Yeah, so Incon, got, Incon came over. in 11. So his squad, and you have to think these are squads of four, so there was a decent amount of players. There could have been up to 40 people still in the game for Incon's team as a whole to come in 11th place. Joe, five players remain. He's going to check this rock. And like I said, once again, Joe will take my money. Joe will take the money. Joe and his team. One more play zone. A couple more here. I have to see where this man at. That looks like that's, uh. <laughs> that is the primal court. He's going to go for the spray. He knows this one's pretty much wrapped up. They're just waiting. Joe, try and go get those legendary gloves. I want to see what the legendary gloves do. There oh, it is. And there it is. His team managed to find that last Maybe we should call it who can beat Joe soul. in Battlegrounds who game. Who can beat Joe in Battlegrounds? Personally, I did win one in the playtest at the office. So yeah. I think if we stack up the odds high enough against Joe, throw some pro and players And Stu and his team actually won Stu one. Stu did get a, a W yesterday. That was a lot of fun. They only had two, pro and that was not, they by no means the most stacked team there. There were full four professional player squads. Yeah. Joe, or Stu only had two, and then some Titan helping him out, and he was able to still get a W there. Stu played Eevee, though. I think Stu's a low-key mechanical legend. Yeah, probably is. And I did win, get first place one time. Wow. Who were I was you the only one playing. Who were you playing? There were 100 test bots. <laughs> and I was the only one playing, so um, I did win that one. But it is what it is. So far... Who is your favorite character that you have played, or what, has there been any sort of playtest meta developing as to what you kind of think is the I best? Don't, so far, we haven't actually seen what the best is. When I tried Canesta, I died quickly to a really? flanker. When I tried a flanker, yeah. I died quickly to a victor. It, it's just, for me... Well, you were talking about... My best character has been Barrack so far, because I can keep running away. Dude. I can put, oh. down, I can put down the turrets. I'm and having the, nightmares right now. And the turrets keep dismounting people. Oh my goodness, I'm so, having a night, and, and you gotta think. So people are chasing you, just keep dropping turrets along the way, and they get dropped off the mount so you can run away. Oh. So if you want the run away strat, Barrack is your man. That's the guy, you know, you slap the dome shield down, you take off the turrets as well. Interesting choices there, because you were talking about, there's eight available characters, four if you don't own all of the characters, so there is ways to kind of build your compositions, but you're talking about your Kinesis job's not working out. You have to look at everyone that's in the pool for this game. If there's a right. bunch of bucks flying around, or other flankers, or victors, or something like that, maybe you want to think twice about that, Kinesis. I saw four Grovers come out, and that seemed to be working out pretty well. The Grover matches were fantastic. I know <laughs> that, that was a lot of fun watching to watch. Grover on this is, is really good. I actually played Grover and really enjoyed it a lot. First of all, those axes, if you hit them from really far away, it's scaling. they do huge damage. It is really, really and scary and scaling. And then on the other hand, you did get to heal. Now, yeah. there is a card that removes the healing. You can find a legendary card that basically negates Entirely? Healing. Or uh, 90%? Uh, I think I saw 90%. Soon enough, will be entirely. Oh, my God. If Ferris <laughs> will have his way, it will so, be all of it. So there's counter cards almost everything. Counter cards gotcha. for stealth, counter card to um, oh, really? health. Counter card even, there'll be one for headshots. Mr. Joe, come here. So yeah. we've got 20 USD. Everybody, this is oh. High Res Joe, one of our leads here. Mick, come on up here as well. You guys doing a lot of hard work for this. <laughs> We've got another mic underneath either. the desk near Ares. I'm hearing you guys can I'll search around can for that headset. I've got the Alienware laptop. I've got five Australian. This is Australian dollars. I was talking about how it's unrippable, and then I ripped it immediately. I think it's because it's old, but if you rip it on the side, I don't know. It's cool. It's made of magic. We've got mics coming out. So, Joe. What are you, you going to give us. me, like, half a prize here? Uh, this is 20 USD, five Australian D. I'm oh, give thank that you very you. Congratulations much. Congratulations on not one, but two victories there. And, and talk us through oh, your strategy. Wonderful. Because, I mean, consistently, consistency in a battle royale is not something that is easy to achieve, but you just seem to be looted, kitted to the teeth almost every game. Well, I mean, understanding the, the core concepts of, of looting, it's, <laughs> it's much different than the, the regular Paladins game mode. So um, as these players that we were playing with uh, play a little bit more, I'm sure the competition will get much, much uh, closer, so um, I've had the, the you know pleasure of playing that for about mic on. a month. So you know I do have that experience over them, but yeah. we'll see as this uh, weekend and uh, goes on. Yeah, I'm but sure it'll get. Uh, 
What I was saying with awesome. Erez, there's a lot of things that seem to be rewarding aggressive play. No prone in the bathtub play, if right. you will. Right. And that's what you were going. You were always looking for kills. You were always looking for those legendary chests. Your eyes mm -hmm. were to the skies more often yeah. than they were the ground. So you would say there's a lot more favor for those that are looking to get aggressive and engage sure. other players. Yeah. And, and keeping an eye on, uh, on the horizon and looking for players who are kind of distracted by other things or by loot itself. Um, and and you right. know, getting the jump on them is is key as well. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. So Mick, talking about going into that lobby when you're looking at the characters available, how do you guys in the playtest room sort of strategize about what you guys want to pick, what you want to go for? Uh, well, we look at just the overall team comp, and, and like, like you said before, there is a uh, subset of champions that you can choose. Right. And so going into it, you don't know exactly what you're going to see there. Uh, and then uh, we we use the voice lobby chat and voice chat. Um, to figure out what we want to do. It. You guys we, are communicating very well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes the strat is to take two of the same champion. We do support that right now. Gotcha. Um, and so you can take two barracks and do double runaway strategy. Uh, I mean, in that first game, <laughs> it put your mic back on there. What are you doing, the champ? Four, this was working. Oh. The four <laughs> barracks bad. runaway team? <laughs> Bro, that's your bathroom I equivalent. That. That's what I, because because it's, that it's a good first threat. game actually was one of the first time I've actually seen it close on a, on a tile set on a map on Timber Mill. In fact, is where you guys kind of put that game away. Yeah, that would have been really interesting with four kitted barracks. I don't know how you would have aggressed that. Have you guys ever gotten to that type of situation where it's just turtled up and the, the, the fog that's, really that's closes down? That's one interesting thing about this mode is that. If you have a certain comp that works in long range, like Kinesa, yeah. um, you're going to do well at the beginning. But then as the fog closes in, or you're trying to get an engagement in one of those like cities with a lot of you know cover and other stuff like that, you're probably not going to win, you're honestly, not. unless you have a good uh, a comp. And so a, a quad Kinesa team might you know just uh, wreck at the beginning, yeah, yeah. you know, getting some people off guard. But at the end. Um, you know, a quad barrack is probably going to be that. And out. the thing is, if you have the four barrack comp, which right. we did try one time, <laughs> works really well until the fog comes in and you need to move. Really? And then you're basically caught with your pants down. <laughs> so if you can find well, you the know, spot... You can use left click, too. What's that? You can use your left click to shoot people. You don't oh. have to let turrets do everything. You don't actually I thought Barrack run only runs time? away. You know, believe it or not. I just put turrets and run. I don't play the guy much myself. Now, I want to add that <laughs> we will have... I stay away from him. For this mode, there will be leaderboards. Ooh. And it's not, it's not going to have a competitive mode, but it will have various types of rankings to show off how well you've done how often you finish first place and such. Beautiful. Yeah. Question for Mick. Um, right now, the games that we saw were just the four-man squads, but traditionally, yeah. you know, there's duos, there's solos, and in the keynote, we talked about, you know, it's designed for that four-man squad, but what are our thoughts on those duos? Yeah, we've been views? trying a lot of experiments with the team comps and, and sizes. Uh, we've tried everything from one to five, right. and uh, w right now, we're mostly sticking with one four. One to five, huh? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, right now, we've got four. Um, we're going to be, we're planning on supporting two and four, Okay. Uh, but we are also planning on having the option to say, you know what, I'm going to be in a solo party by myself. I don't want to backfill with anybody else. I think I can take on teams of four myself, and so that should be interesting. So people like Joe, who uh, <laughs> thinks that they can do that, but he did get saved by that Makoa. And that, and that, that was cool. He almost got blown up. I was I really was impressed really with that really to play. I, and, I don't and, even know who was on my team, You don't actually. know who that Makoa was? I need to go give him a hug. If you guys and, and were on a, Joe's team out here in the Expo Hall, give us, give us some shout-outs yeah, here. You are HRX85. I think that's <laughs> I think you're the guy. <laughs> HRX85. I think that's somewhere over there. Is that yeah. my yeah, that's yeah, my yeah, guy yeah, right yeah. there? There's your Makoa. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That's the man that I owe you my life. And part of the great thing about this game, though, is that there you know are... What? I'm going to give him You can money. have that ripped. Yeah, he, he gets the money. <laughs> Part of the great thing about this game mode is that you do have champions, since yeah. it is a hero-based shooter, you do have champions that specialize in support. And so support is a very fundamental part of your team comp. So if you do run all Knessas or all Barracks, you are missing that that healing and that, that support role. Yeah, one thing I wanted to say, too, is that for the demo purposes, we've just given everybody the default cards. So it's going to be really inter okay. interesting to see all the new uh, talent um, right, and how they right. play, you know, with the different comps and everything, too. So I'm really interested to see where this goes uh, when it's live. And a couple of things. One of the things we'll probably do is make sure that we introduce legendary cards to help people play in this mode. So we don't want to upset the previous mode, but maybe there'll be ones that work slightly better in this mode than one of the other modes, and you can yeah. kind of choose that. So that might be a path. So you're saying Battle Royale specific? No, not specific, but ones that we know will function better in one mode versus another. Gotcha. So that might be a path to make sure that some of the classes that may be more viable, less viable in particular modes have an opportunity to play a more viable path in the gotcha. other mode. Because that's something that's going to come into play is the loadout cards, the legendary cards that are all in the base game of Paladins. 
and you, you have to unlock those like the rest of us do. And, you know, there are some of the, those cards available to you at base. You're just talking about giving the best available option for the battlegrounds in the battlegrounds. Right. So using the card system, we can make sure that there's ways to play each mode as optimally as possible. Gotcha. And without affecting the other modes, essentially. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So kind of, I, I guess what I'm getting at is like, for instance, we'll take Grover, right? Yeah. He's got at base in Paladins the the rampant blooming legendary. His basically his healing legendary is going to be what he takes at base. But that might not be what you want exactly in a massive 300 times the size map of normal. You might want ferocity, the damage over distance scaling. So we'd give him that, for instance. Exactly. That would so be to speak, play. hypothetically. Which which in a longer distance game, you probably want cards that help people. Yeah. Uh, somehow either close the distance or have longer range which you don't need as much in the other game. And it wouldn't be as useful in the normal uh, siege mode, let's say, but in this particular mode, it might be more useful to have that. Gotcha. One question I had for uh, either Mick or Joe. You were finding a lot of, of the duplicates of the World Stompers, those legendary boots. Is there just one legendary per slot, or are there some decisions to be made? At the moment, there is just one, but okay. there will be more than one. So for yeah. the play test here, it's just one, but that will change. And it's random, too, so okay. you're not sure what's going to be in there. Are there certain stats that are locked to each slot? So are you only going to get plus damage on your weapon slots? Are you only going to get anti-heal on your weapon slots, armor pen on your gloves, defense on your chest? That's still something we're experimenting with, so I'm not sure what the end result will be. But right now, that's the way it works. So do you guys have plans right now? For the most part, you've stayed inside of what the item store and Paladins will passively already give to you, but is there plans to maybe be look outside of what the item store already gives? I don't gives? think we're going to go too far away from okay. where the item store is at. First, we want people to have some level of consistency between sure. the different modes, so when you learn something, it's applicable in the other modes. And at the same time, those cards that are in the item store are designed specifically to also be able to counter other type of build. So yeah. as an example, you want the anti-stealth card if the other team decided to go with, uh, you know, four skies. Right. I remember I remember seeing that. What's, what item is that? Yeah, on? What slot is that um, in? I can't remember. I think remember. it's one of the boots. I think it's the boots of tracking or something like that. Okay. And it gives you um, far beyond what normal is that uh, gonna be, Paladin is, Siege is, Mode does. So that's got to be an epic then. If there's it only is. one legendary. It's an epic. It comes on one of, uh, mm. it'll come on one of the other legendaries, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. be, you'll be able to find yeah. the various cards. So you can cards. see stealth characters from really far away because the map is so big. Right. The, the standard item store, you know, it's You've retuned too small, so. what Illuminate would have done, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. and, and you can swap them out, yeah. yeah. Right. You'll have a super Illuminate, basically. And that's, exactly. uh, that kind of goes for a, a couple of those stats, the damage, for instance. Aggression is thankfully no longer with <laughs> us at the item store. <laughs> I, I like it. I think yesterday you said Aggression 10. Aggression <laughs> 10. That's what the mother load is going to yeah. give to you guys. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. We saw two games here from Joe. He won both of them. I don't know if the cards are stacked in his favor or what. But this has been pretty hair. Joe, Mick, Erez, all the leads here on Palin's Battlegrounds. Congratulations. Congratulations, you, sir. Yeah. These. That's this, going to. This 25. Going to that guy. That, thank that you guys Makoa. so much for joining <laughs> me. We're going to go give this to Woo. our Makoa player over there that saved Joe's life. And we all thank you so much for joining us here. we got a lot of Paladins action still on the slate for today in the Expo Hall. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Time is right. Let us light up the fuse.